Hi, I'm Mark from Valor XL. Thank you for joining me. Today, I'd like to welcome you to a tutorial on how to use the chroma key feature in FlexClip. If you're unfamiliar with FlexClip, it's a really powerful online video editing tool. And recently, FlexClip released three exciting new features. We're taking a look at each one of them in its own separate video. And today's video will be focusing on chroma key. Now, I will leave a link in the description below this video for a tutorial that we did a while back that outlines the basic features and functionality of FlexClip, and I'll also include a link to the FlexClip website so that you can take a look at their various options and decide which one would be best for you. I did want to mention that FlexClip provided Valor XL with a business license version of FlexClip for the purposes of creating today's video. But right now, I'd like to go ahead and log into FlexClip. So first of all, we'll end up here on the FlexClip homepage. So we'll come up in the left-hand corner and click on Create a Video. And now it'll ask us to select an aspect ratio. We'll go with 16 to 9. And now we need to import the media that we'll use in our project. So I'll click on Browse. And I have a specific clip that I want to bring in here. It's footage that I shot of my colleague, Danny. It's basically a standard green screen shot. Now the whole concept of chroma key has been around for a very long time. And it basically centers around the idea of filming someone in front of a green screen or sometimes a blue screen. And then removing that solid color background and replacing it with another image. FlexClip makes it extremely easy to do that, and I'll demonstrate here in just a second. Now, if I were to simply bring this clip of Danny in and just add it down here to our timeline, it would basically function as just a standard video clip. Let me play that and see what we have. Now, that won't serve our purposes for using Chroma Key, so I want to remove that clip. The first thing that we need to do is to actually import whatever it is that we would like to use as our new background. So in FlexClip, you have many different options under Images. I'll come to the vertical toolbar and select Images. And I thought it might be interesting to have Danny in front of the Eiffel Tower. I did a search earlier, and I found a shot of the Eiffel Tower that I really liked. I thought the sky was particularly interesting in it. So I'll go ahead and select that one. And when you want to bring a stock image into your timeline, it's very easy to do. If you click on the plus sign, it now gets added as a scene. The clip of Danny that we'll be using is about 16 seconds long. So I'll just extend this and bring it out to about 16 seconds. Now, one of the things that you'll notice if I hit play is that we have some movement here. When you bring a still image in, up here at the top under Inside Motion, it defaults to Zoom In. I'm going to select None because I don't want there to be any movement. I just want it to be stationary for when we bring Danny's image in in front of it. So I'll come back to Media. Now, if I were to simply bring Danny's image down, it would just become another scene. And that's not what we want. We want to actually integrate her into this existing scene. In order to do that, I'll come up here and click on Add as Layer. Now when I do that, it brings the image of Danny into our preview screen. And then it also adds it down here in the timeline as a separate element. So let me just do some basic resizing here. We'll play around with this a little bit more in a minute. And let me just move that over here. Now, in order to remove this green background, I'll come up here to the top and click on Chroma Key. A lot of times when someone is filmed in front of a green screen, it will be very similar to this color. This is pretty much the standard. You'll notice that she's in front of a much darker green. So what do we do in that case? Well, if you come up here and click on this eyedropper icon, it gives us the ability to sample the color of the background. So I'll click on that. And there it's already taken most of it away. 
Now, one of the things that you will notice with chroma key is that you wind up with a little bit of the residue of that original background color acting as kind of like an outline for the person. And so it's a matter of playing around to minimize how much you see that. And you do that via this intensity control. If I slide this control the entire way to the left, it brings all of the original background color in. And if I go to the right, as I do so, you'll notice that it continuously is removing the green that we see around Danny. But you have to be very judicious with this because if you go too far to the right, you start to compromise the integrity of your original image. There can be certain situations where maybe that's beneficial. If you wanted some kind of a ghostly effect, you could certainly do something like that. But the vast majority of the time, you'll want to be pretty moderate with it. And it really ends up becoming something where you have to just kind of find a happy medium where you're reducing the amount of green and yet not taking away too much of the original image. It can also be problematic if the person is wearing clothing that has a color similar to the background they were originally filmed in front of. Because if you have that scenario, then you can wind up with this new background poking through somewhere on their clothing. So it's just something you have to be aware of. Let's take a look at what we have so far. Now that doesn't look too bad, but I'd like Danny to blend in a little bit more with the lighting that we have here. So if I select her clip and come up here to the top toolbar, I can click on Adjust. And now I have access to these controls. And I'll just experiment here a little bit and see if I can maybe get her to blend in a little bit better with the background photo that we selected. This will vary depending on the conditions under which your subject was filmed and also the nature of the background image that you've selected. But let's take a look at that and just kind of see what we have. And I think that looks pretty good. So that's how you would add a static background photo. But the nice thing in FlexClip is that you also have the ability to add a video background. So in order to do that, let me go down here and add another scene. And we'll come over here and click on videos. Now, because Danny was holding a stuffed monkey, I thought it would be funny to add her into a video clip with a monkey in it. So I actually found one a little bit earlier that I liked. And I'll go ahead and select that. I thought it would be appropriate for our purposes. And yeah, that's a good one. So I'll bring that down. And now, as we did before, we can come up here and add Danny's image as a layer. And let me resize her here. And we'll select chroma key and sample the current color. And let me just bring this up a little bit. All right, let's check this out. And as before, we can do some adjustment on her image here and see if we can get it to match a little bit better. I like that. It's really that simple to use chroma key in FlexClip. And it always is really a lot of experimentation because again, it's dependent on the image that you're using and the conditions under which your subject was initially filmed. But it's really a great way to expand the possibilities and really have 
a lot more flexibility in what you do with your video creations. I really do appreciate you joining me today, and I encourage you to check out Flex Clip. Also, please give this video a like and consider subscribing to Valor XL. We publish new content on a regular basis that's geared toward helping small businesses to truly thrive. Thanks again for joining me today. I invite you to come back for the next installment and remember at Valor XL, we're committed to helping you do smart work. I'll see you next time and until then, goodbye for now.